Hi, this is Sheila with Conscious Conversation Central, and today is Saturday, uh, April the 27th, 2019, and yay, I got my gal pal, Posse, BZ Rieger, and Lisa Flamino Rush. Hello. And I guess, I, I think we're going to call this one Honoring All Paths, and this, is a, this one is a topic that's been on my mind quite a bit for a while now, and and I've seen a lot about this back and forth in um, on Facebook and different venues. And I know uh, I'm just going to say it right up front that warning, this is going to tweak a few people. <laughs> just I'm going to say that right now. Um, and it has to do with diet and it has to do with. Well, not just, I mean, it's really not th this particular, I want to concentrate on the diet portion because, you know, I've seen a lot specifically in regards to being vegetarian or vegan, as opposed to being a carnivore or an omnivore or whatever you want to call it. And I've, there's been a lot of times in my life where I have found myself not eating quite as much meat as, as, as opposed to other times in my life and not for any particular reason, just whatever I felt called to do. But I have noticed that there seems to be quite the debate sometimes in, in regards to this. And there's a lot being made of whether or not eating animals is a can it's like there's a I don't know I have felt a, a judgment in regards to well if you eat an animal you're just not spiritual and you know that sort of thing it's kind of the feeling I've gotten not that anybody's ever actually said that to me but it's kind of a feeling that I've that I've gotten in regards to that and I've even seen arguments develop where, um, you know, those who do eat meat say, well, wait a minute, you know, uh, plants are sentient as well. And, you know, then, you know, the, ar the arguments escalate from there. And I mean, I, I don't know. I feel a lot of programming involved on both sides in regards to this. I'm not real clear as to a why and um, b why it's such a big damn deal for everybody that they be right on this. And I, I you know, I, I that's why I see it, it's um, the whole idea for me in regards to what we're doing here is that we're not supposed to be the same. Everyone is coming here for experiences. And that means everyone, not just the humans, but the animals that are incarnating, the plants that grow, the birds that fly or don't fly. Um, now, do I think that confined animal feeding operations are a good thing? No, I do not. I, I think that's, uh, you know, a travesty that needs to be looked at. Absolutely. But I just don't, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I feel a lot of programming and conditioning that goes into this particular subject. Um, and a lot of it does, for some reason, feel like, for me, what I've seen is that, you know, because it has a face, it's sentient. And how can you eat that? Well, I don't know. I, every tree or plant that I've interacted with has a face for me, too. So I'm not real clear on how easily that can be just dismissed everything is energy at its most basic and so i get a little confused 
for this. And I, I, I wanted to bring this up and see what, what the two of you might offer in regards to this, because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of confused about it. And I, I feel like everyone has the right to choose what they would like to, to, to embrace or not embrace, but to, a lot of what is said in regards to the subject feels like it's a programmed response. Like there doesn't feel to be a lot of where, you know, as soon as anybody says, well, plants have feelings too, there's a whole lot of dismissing going on. It feels like to me. And, and, um, um, I'm reminded of all of the information that I've read and experienced in regards to the Native American approach to honoring all animals that they ever, you know, most of what they did was, you know, gathering, yes, but there was actually hunting involved and there was always a use of every single bit and gratitude. Um, you know, as that's done. So, yeah, I know that there are lots of different things in the way that we, you know, grow and process meat in these days that I don't particularly care for either. But that aside, the issue between those two, I don't know, there just seems to be a great imbalance in the way it lo it's looked at or whatever. So... Help me out, gals. <laughs> you know, I mean, I feel a lot of programming and conditioning on both sides in regards to it. I mean, even the fruit that you pick off of the tree is still energy. And, you know, so. Way in. Um, so, yeah, this is a really interesting topic because, um, I had to unbind and unwind my whole relationship with food. So I like that you're using um, the word program because I really realized <laughs> I was dealing with, I am still finding myself dealing with a lot of programs surrounding food. Um, so it's a big one, actually. And so for me, I've just kind of looked at it as, um, trying to unbind and unwind what is and isn't accurate about food and my body. So what I'm trying to do is just form a new relationship with food. Um, and I kind of had to make peace with what I was doing because I did kind of wake up too to, to the fact that, well, for me, it was not that we were eating meat, per se. I mean, I guess I do remember as a small child thinking, wait, chicken is the chicken? I mean, like, like I didn't <laughs> always make that correlation until I did. You know, I kind of remember feeling a little shocked by that. Um, but it wasn't until um, the more the more conscious I became about um, how the chickens were treated, let's stay with the chickens, and that mattered to me. Um, and so I kind of had to make peace with what I was doing personally because I, I found myself upset by the world I was in. So I just kind of took it to that level for me. And so, um, I did kind of what you were talking about with the Native American piece where I was just trying to connect with my food. Anything that I was gonna introduce into my, my temple, my vessel, I wanted to um, connect with and honor and appreciate. And so, you know, I'm still trying to figure out um, what suits me and so I'm finding that what suits me you know a week ago might not suit me tomorrow afternoon <laughs> and so I'm trying to stay really open and fluid with that that's how I'm working with it and um, I have changed a lot of my habits 
um, some things just kind of naturally fell away and um, new habits developed, you know, like for certain, um, just for me stopping the processed food habit that I had, like I was eating a lot of processed food and I realized how that was affecting my body. And so I started to see food as a relationship and whether the, that relationship was good for me or not so good for me. Um, so I'm kind of dealing with it in terms of relationship now. I have a healthier relationship with my body. I really love and adore and respect my body. So I notice when it's uncomfortable and I want to, um, I'm more inclined to listen to my body when it's uncomfortable and then seek the more comfortable things and that's shifting for me too and so i'm just trying to stay really open and fluid um, with my relationships <laughs> so that i'm not too attached to anything that i might discover is unhealthy because sometimes i was doing things that i was told was healthy and i believed they were healthy and then Later on, through relationship with my body, I realized that particular food isn't healthy for me, <laughs> and that that's okay too. And um, also, I know that not every body is the same, so every body might have a different relationship with food than I do. And so, I just hold open space for that too. Um, that each body will work it out for themselves what feels best for them. I think it's um, one of the things that I think is particularly fascinating is that the subject that you picked is, is around food and different kinds of food that you can eat and, and the camps that people will get in, the vehemence with which they'll stand in the different camps and stuff. And um so so we're using you know the food as the metaphor but the real conversation that all of this is is fascinating because it's it's about energy it's about the frequency that you hold it's about coming from your heart or not or from the head dictating it's about integration so it's about a whole lot of things and the food is a um, a metaphor for it. Um, the energies coming in <clears throat> that are coming in through us and um, rearranging all of us will change what we <clears throat> um, want to eat, feel like eating, feel like, oh, I didn't like that, you know, eating, <clears throat> that will be helpful in different ways for us to eat things. And they can be one way, let's say, very, <clears throat> really resonate super well in the morning and not at all come dinner or for a couple days or for a couple weeks or um and that's a pretty common thing and things that you may think are you know not healthy or you can read this study or that fat or whatever it is that that's not healthy but at that moment and you've never really eaten those and at that moment you have to eat that kind of food so then you go through this whole rest thing with well why do I feel like you feel compelled? I mean, you, you know, and the other part is that if you've been listening, you know, in listening to yourself and your nudges, you're nudged and you know to go eat that. So there's another disconnect for you because, you know, well, it's bad or it's not good for me or I'm spiritual or I'm supposed to be enlightened or I'm supposed to be all these kinds of things and I want to have potato chips and I don't even like potato chips, but Okay, so, but there's salt and stuff. So there's different, different ingredients and these different things that go in with a different, your entire body, your, all of your bodies, all of your bodies and every single piece, not one piece missing is all changing. 
and it's all energy and electromagnetics and it has to do with not only frequencies of things but the um, the molecular makeup of them and how they interlock with the changes kind of like combustible fuel with the changes that are going on so again so for me I'm I like playing with the with the fascinating part of what this is so what I just said there think about the whole um the whole thing that's going on just within you, you don't need anybody else on the, you know, this should bandwagon or don't do that bandwagon or you got to do this bandwagon or you're not like this bandwagon. Just in yourself, you've set up this whole thing. A and what I just described, well, I don't even like those and I'm, you know, but I know, and you know, but I'm eating them because I feel nudged to eat them and I want them. And then it could be, you know, where I have a handful of potato chips and I throw the bag out. After that, because that's all I needed was that one handful of potato chips. Or it's a bag, you know, and then that's all. And, but it strikes, for me particularly, it strikes me because I don't eat potato chips. Thinking, but I don't even like them. But in that moment, with the nudge, they... So when I started to understand that these things, that's one example, things that come at the, that the right stage time for each individual. This is not... You know, it's Monday and it's this, or it's this month, or this, that. It's for each individual. So that helped a little because, because what I also noticed is that sets up a lot of integration for I don't like this, and I shouldn't, and this and that, and the other thing, you know, and, and flowing. It. But again, it comes back to energetics, it comes back to feeling, it comes back to trusting oneself, it comes back to your own guidance and listening. And a lot of, um, a lot of people will talk about the whole, you know, meat eater thing and, and they talk about, um, reptilians and stuff. That's one of the reasons that we have, uh, as, as the human being, the way that we're, tinkered with at the end of our design um, it because of all the reptilian DNA is to eat the meat and so there there is um, there are many who feel that if more and more beings ate less or not meat at all <clears throat> it's not so much about the meat per se it's about the energetic frequency of it because in the shift of of um you know wholesale large collectives withdrawing from that it shifts the energy and the um the the, the reptilians that are around and the archons and all that, it shifts their energy because we're all, oh, look at that. We're all one. So there, so there is, um, and I feel that there is something to that. The biggest thing that I would say on all this is that <clears throat> I let myself guide me and, and nudge me to eat different things. And there'll be some days where I eat very little. I drink a lot of water and I may have <clears throat> some broccoli and some nuts and that's it. And then there may be another day where, you know, I feel like eating more, but I don't say, Oh, well, I got to have a balanced meal and this and that on the one day that I don't <clears throat> because it, and I'm working hard, you know, I mean, I'm out from morning to night and, doing all sorts of really hard work, physical work, in addition to other kinds of work. So, but by not fighting with it within myself, right? Um, it, it's part of the whole process that is intimate and unique for me. So just to go back to what both of you laid out, <clears throat> 
that when are the, when there are these these camps, you know, a, any camping, <laughs> aside from you know just hanging out in the woods, um, when there's campness, that's a really good indication of not at all in your heart, because when you're in your heart. You do what you do, and you do what you are moved to do, and you flow in the way that you're moved to flow, and someone else does the same thing, and you can come into connection, you can observe, you can co-create, you do all sorts of things, and that doesn't mean that you'll, unless you do, feel the need to do what that being is doing or vice versa, but it absolutely means you will not feel the need to camp that. Right? You know what I mean? To, to box them off, to divide them, to get out your sushi knives and, you know, move them in different places. And the reason that this topic is so intriguing to me is because where it comes on the front lines, you know, it's, it's again, people are dividing themselves, you know, spiritual or not. Okay, well, same thing what I just, I'm just saying the same thing I just said in a slightly different way. That's an open heart. That's connective with one another. That's where we're all learning to do what we're learning to do. And we have our boundaries and we have our strength of our own inner strength. And we don't, get pushed or swayed or or coerced or any of those kinds of things from someone else so there is no fear so there is no i've got to prove something to someone else kind of thing it's just not needed because you know who you are and you're magnificent in who you are and so is this person and this person and this person and you don't have to come to you know fisticuffs with them over whatever it is to do that. So that to me is the piece that's the most fascinating. It we just use well, we use a lot of things, but we use the the food or the knot and the other kind of things. So the one last thought I have on that is that when you so let's take for example if if you're don't eat me, it's not you know, a poor animal and um and, and actually, I know how a lot of animals are raised, and those would be a good reason just the way they're raised not to eat them, um, you know. But I also I also honor the whole idea of Native American where they're honoring something. So, um, but when you get into the the, um, I don't eat animals. Um, I don't, I don't want to do that because I'm very spiritual and I want to raise my energy and, and so you're on that. And, and in the same breath, in the same step, you're vehemently against pushing away from pushing the others away or convincing them, the other thems that aren't you, of why that's bad, why they shouldn't do it, why they're bad, why they're not spiritual, whatever it is. And that's, that is a common refrain. And I smile because I think, okay, well, the energy frequency that was touted over here for all the reasons you don't do what you're saying that you do, completely, it not only left the building or flew out the window or left the planet because of the whole other thing. So one may th be in this thought process that this is raising their vibration and enlightening their energy and all this kind of stuff because they don't eat meat. Absolutely. Could be. Yes. But as soon as you step this other thing up, you've gone. Phew! So there's, there's the, the differential is, you know, you be, but you could eat, this is not accurate, but it, just to make a funny thing, you know, you'd have to eat a hundred cows, right? And you, and you still wouldn't be climbing up a level, the level that you fell from the energy frequency that you're putting out. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's not, none of this is in isolation. 
and it's all starts with us. Right. And I get that there's, it's not in, in isolation, I guess, uh, my, my sense of it from, from the beginning in, in any conversations that I have reluctantly, I should say, entered into in regards to this subject, it always, I, I felt some programming and some conditioning that goes along with it on both sides. I am not stating that it's on either one side or the other. No, it's absolutely, yeah. And, 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 um, either everything, everything incarnates as in, in a free will fashion or not. It feels like to me, um, I can't imagine that, any uh, plant or animal that incarnates here is doing so against its will. Um, I mean, I guess it could be, but. <laughs> well, you're right. That's what I mean. That's why there's, it's not happening in isolation to each other. So we're in a three, third dimension. We're in density. And we have different things that come into play with that. The way that the, that the mind, when each of us, you know, got to this planet this time around is very different than it is now, even if we don't think it is, but for everybody, it is very different and it's getting very different moment by moment by moment by moment. Right. And that's what I mean, part of the nudges of changing things. Yeah. You know, well, you pointed out something, um, actually that I'd like to delve well perhaps a little deeper into and that is the um, because there is a lot being made about in regards to um, those that don't eat meat um, their vibration raises higher rather than those who do Mm -hmm. and then um, and I'm, I'm not, I'm not real clear about the reptilian portion of that BZ. I, 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 I know what you mean by that. However, I, I, I and I, I would guess I'd have to feel into that a little more before. Well, I, the simple answer is that the reptilians are, are eating meat all the time and they're called humans. And, um, just saying. Well, I get that, but I mean, you were speaking in terms of our uh, the tinkering that had been done, and and immediately my my I, I I got a picture of the brontosaurus that only eats herbs and trees and things like that. So I'm not quite. Cer- I mean, and I realize what you meant, but what I, where I was going with what I was saying prior was that the moment that programming and conditioning kicks in in regards to those who are saying, well. I only eat plants and therefore my vibration is higher. And then the finger pointing begins and the camping, you know, the camping begins as you said. Which lowers the vibration. Right. Which pulls. So it's vibration. kind of a moot point. Right. That's, that's kind of what I was saying. Yeah. Um, and I, but okay. So maybe this is, I feel programming and conditioning behind all of that though, not just, Okay, so maybe it does raise one's vibration. Um, I, I can't speak to that because I don't really know the truth. Well, here, that. let's go for, let's tease it out for a minute. So if, if you're someone and you listen to your, your nudges and you, sorry about it, don't hit the mic, guys. Mic again. So, no. I'm, I'm a good dog. I have a very high vibration, but I do eat meat sometimes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and he even has a heart on his head, for goodness sake. I'm going to put some two cents into this conversation. Um, Apparently. Well, that's, I think it's funny, you know, people say this, and but they stroke their kitty or their dog, and they either make their own food or they open a can, and it's mackerel. It's, you know. It may have a few veggies in it, but it's not, it's not petunias. You know, it's not carrots. 
Well, don't get me started on the pet thing, BZ, because that's not a good place for me to go either because I got an issue with that too, to be honest. So, But so what I'm saying is that, again, that there's, it's, there's kind of like a tunnel vision on certain things. Um, he's sentient. He has an incredibly high vibration. You know, people will stop and hug him. It's one of the reasons we go to the Home Depot. And if we're going to go there, we have to plan two hours to be there because that's how long it takes to go in the store for one little thing where we know the aisle that it's on. You know, um, when we're so back to what you're saying, you were talking about the, uh, you know, it raises your vibration. If you don't eat meat, absolutely could be true. Absolutely. Because of what you're ingesting because of the, distortions especially if you don't pay any attention to where you buy your meat or being mindful with eating or your body and so that, so it's it's not quite as clear cut as that well i don't eat meat and that raises my vibration but like i said vibration isn't just what you ingest it's it's and the meat isn't just what you ingest. It's all of how you walk in the world. It's all of how you carry yourself. It's all of how you tune into yourself. If you don't eat meat, but you let all those tapes that roll in your head around, then that is not raising your vibration. And you have just as much control over that as you have of, you know, not eating the cheeseburger, right? Or if you're not... Um, not willing to open your heart fully so that you can can let you do what feels right for you and let someone else do what feels right for them and perhaps maybe that's a point of integration and and co-creation and understanding well that's interesting you know i do this and i i have a thought of this and a feeling of this but you do that and but I like your energy, you know, you know, right? So it's, it's not just about ingesting something or not, and that's your ticket to ride. is isn't like that. It's like, you know, uh, you could, um, same thing with, we talked about this before, you know, you could, you could eat healthy, you could do different things, but if you have a closed mind and you're as so it's very rigid with your ego mind and that kind of stuff, your heart is absolutely closed. If you're carry that predominant frequency vibration, eating healthy won't do you any good because you have all of that distortion, all of that dis ease within you that is making you ill to get your attention to move forward. So do a lot of these things, do they have an impact and a correlating effect? Yeah, they do. But you, you know, it doesn't help if you hold one as the, you know, the, the, the shining thing and everybody else is doing it wrong and here's why and you're camping all over the place, right? Okay, well, your shining thing has gotten a whole lot heavier now because a high vibration is not judgmental. Yeah. A high vibration is not boxing. A high vibration is not camping. A high vibration is, well, you know, sucks for you, baby. You're not going to be spiritual or high vibration or anything because you're doing this and this and this. And that. It doesn't work because that's, that's hierarchical right? That's better than that. I got it going on. You don't, right? That's not, that's a frequency. And right, well, that's, that's why I, guess I felt that that's why I guess I was feeling some programming and conditioning in, 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 even in that, not that it's something, uh, it's a, okay. Maybe that those aren't the right words. Uh, distractive separation. That's maybe. a much better word. Yeah. Distractive separation in that. Um, well, it's a distortion of 
the idea of the, the you know just eating i mean when i do eat uh solid food a lot of it is vegetables and a lot of it is salads because because i grow it myself because i enjoy it because i love it you know and because i'm nudged to eat it that doesn't make me better than or less than anyone else and it doesn't I could do that and not do a lot of other things and it wouldn't do anything for my vibration, especially if the other things that I'm not doing are things that are lower. That's what point I'm making. So it doesn't matter whether you're a meat eater or not meat eater. Um, what matters is how you hold yourself. Now, becoming aware of different things and how the meat eating or not helps with how you're actually flowing your energy and um, uh, shifting and changing molecular structures within you as you make different jumps, that may be very helpful. And again, that's an intimate and related to each being, and it's their journey to find it. Right. But the 3D structure that we come into the planet from, from a biological structure, not 100%, but a, a large predilection for, plus the tinkering that happened to us since we've got here and gone through our quote unquote, you know, uh, evolution from the mammalian evolution, right? Um, is predisposed so there's programming because it's predisposed <clears throat> to meat eating well i'm very clear too that until the industrial age that it would all all uh farming whether it included animal husbandry or not was done in a completely different way mm -hmm. so you know as far as i'm concerned um you know, uh, picking up your groceries, regardless of what they are, from a grocery store where you have no idea if what you where what what you've picked up, where it was grown, how it was treated, how how it was harvested, what it was sprayed with, what how it was it's not talked to or cared for. I don't care what you're eating. Right. It was not loved or cared about in any way, shape, or form, right. and to neglect the idea of all of that without any kind of, and only concentrate on whether it's ve animal, vegetable, or mineral, it makes no sense to me. And, but that's and more camping. I, 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 I know, that's why I said it, 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 it just, the whole, the, the whole thing, um, I, I just, I get, I, I got a little, I, I do. I get a little confused by it. So. Well, here's, so here's another kind of the, another come around the side. So someone who says, well, um, you know, I'm a human and I'm a carnivore and I'm built that way to eat meat. Okay. It's, a, it's true. I mean, uh, what I just talked about is true. But when you're then, you know, and that's, you know, rabbit eater, rabbit food or, or you know, all that kind of stuff, they, there's the same kind of propensity with some beings to, to be in camping on that as well. Um, and so let's take both camps for a minute. And there's lots of people who eat um, a fair amount of meat, who eat just a little bit of meat, who eat... Uh, all vegetarian or vegan, but they do what they do and they love other beings who do what they do and some do what they do and some do not do at all what they do, but they have the same energy towards all of them and that is, you know, I don't need to hate you or, you know, like shield myself from you because you do X, Y, or Z. And I, and I don't. And when, when, so when, so if you have a meat eater and a vegetable eater, we'll say, right. And they're working on integration and they're working 
um, and being listening and hearing and tuning in and connecting to themselves and an open heart, right? Following their nudges, all those kinds of things, clearing, cleaning all the distortions as best they can in each moment that they can out, right? Those two beings are doing an excellent job raising their vibration, going through expansion. And one of the best things that's raising their vibration is the, you could say, the boundaries. And it's a combination of their own boundaries and their openness to mesh those boundaries with each other. That's doing the single most important thing to raise their vibrations because they're not camping. Yeah. Thank you for saying that because I wanted to say that three times. Yes, the real problem here is the camping that you speak of because honestly, if you are that concerned about the animals and, and, and the, the, the humanity, if you will, then, then please understand that by choosing a camp, you're, you're creating war. You're actually energizing that which you're resisting. Yes. You're supporting it to continue. So if you truly do not wish for it to continue, you wouldn't choose a side and rail against it and then energize it. By unbinding and unwinding it within each one of us, meaning come to terms with your own relationship with your food. And that's really what's at issue here. Mm -hmm. is, and it's more than just food. For me, it's everything is relationship. But to, to see my food in that way changed everything for me. And really, um, the man at war with himself is living in a, a world of war. So for me, I had to stop warring with myself <laughs> about that, uh, of that and anything else, really. But it's the choosing up of the sides, I think, is the most damaging thing. And really what we need to do is unify. And if you can unify just within your own self on the topic, and like BZ was talking about finding unification with another, even though they're in a different moment of now, because I believe we're all going to come to the same conclusions here, but maybe at the not at the same time or speed. And that's okay too. <laughs> Every, you know, I just find myself encouraging myself a lot these days to just, just breathe. <laughs> Everything, it's okay that things are the way they are right now. I don't have to be upset about them and at war with anything that is happening here. Um, because on some level, it is all for my benefit. <laughs> right. Well, you're right. Whatever we resist persists and whatever we beat the, beat the drum on resisting, well, we've just magnified it. We've yeah. given more energy to that imbalance. Either way, it doesn't matter what right. you know whether the whether the drum is uh, or or against <laughs> mooing or or uh, just got corn juice coming out of it. <laughs> well, really that, you both make a very good point in that, um, <clears throat> Lisa. You you were speaking about unification, and that's a Okay, so conformity is also unification, and that's why I'm saying I I feel when I when I was saying that I feel programming and conditioning in this, it is that's exactly what I'm speaking to. Um, it's there's this feeling that well, <laughs> and believe me, <laughs> I used to practice this a lot. It was all my way or the highway, and if you didn't agree with me, well, you just weren't in the know. And, and so I recognize that and, and, and that's kind of what it sort of feels like instead of, um, so, you, so you're equating, you're equating. No, I'm saying that there's, um, hmm. in, in almost anything where there's camping involved there, there feels like 
And just so everybody's clear, when we are talking about camping, it's Cam- I was going to say camping. camping, not going out yeah. by a lovely brook, and you know what I did. Right. It's 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 <laughs> finding yourself in this no, camp no or this camp or this camp over here. So right, any place that there is any sort of camping involved in that, this is the way this should be, and everybody should do this. That actually is conformity, not unification. Unification for me, anyway, my experience of what the two of you are are talking about and unity consciousness as a whole, my my take on that is that we unify and that everybody can do whatever every, everybody wants to do because that's the whole idea is having your own experience and being okay with me having my experience, Lisa having her experience, BZ having her experience. And I don't need either one of you or anybody else to do what I do because just because it's right for me does not mean it's right for you. And, and that's what I mean. And the the difference. Unity, yeah. And the unity, because I, I didn't hear a quite formed question, but the unity comes in because there's such strength and power and resilience and expansion and love in each being, even if they don't hold any of the same kind of habits for eating, just because just this what this conversation about or other things, yet they can, as I talked about, you know, you got those two people and and they're friends, they have different things they do, there's some things they don't do at all, right, you know? But that's where the unity is, because there is no boundaries on the love. There's no boundaries, there's no trigger that triggers the heart to close, you know, and kind of fisticuffs over in this camp or this camp about it. Right. You know, and, well, and I guess- there, there are some things where for one person, you know, maybe there has to do with um, a smell of something where like, great, then you figure out ways to fix that in that it works for you and it works for this person. You know, if, if you're living in the same house or something, um, um, or you just know that when someone's, you know, you don't go to the same restaurant with a friend, if, if you don't like the food that they eat, cause it smells a certain way. That's not, it's like when someone's pregnant or anything like that, you, you know, the, when you split off, there's a good take, right? When you split off and you have these different factions, it is, even though you may look at it more on a, on a, um, a vertical plane, it is hierarchical. And both are picking their hierarchical and, you know, that's part of the dueling because, well, oh, no, I'm, no, I'm, no, I'm, no, you know, kind of a thing. And on all of that is coming up more and more now. You said you'd mention it. You mentioned that you see it more now because it's that's the chaff that's got to come off. That's the lint, the dust on the lens. All that's got to come off. And so um, it comes off in the chaos. It comes off in more heightened vehemence. It comes off in more heightened you know, camping this, um, because it's coming up for you to look at it and for you to be presented because you are giving you this wonderful gift to help you, you know, take off the coats, take off the lint, take all that stuff off. That's how you get there. You either choose to do it your way. And yes, there's some work in that. And sometimes it's, you know, got to, you know, really, scrub to get that off right so there's hard work or painful work or all that kind of work too it it's less always less so than if you're not doing it intentionally and it keeps coming up and keeps coming up and keeps coming up and you know now you're out there as lisa was saying in a war and shit's flying and you know it's coming off so you know <clears throat> yeah, because they're just, it just seems to me like they're feel, well, what I have felt in, in a lot of it, whenever I have witnessed it, I, I stay out of it because there's really, I, I, I got nothing I can add to it one way or the other, to be honest. Um, but I, I feel, I have felt a lot of, uh, like I said, there, there feels to be some 
programming in regards to some of it, but there's also a lot of judgment mm -hmm. that comes up on both and sides. You, and you can't take no matter what side you're on until you get off the side and let that go. You can't take it with you. And, and, and if you're thinking that, you know, you're going to raise your vibration or going to 5D or catching the free shuttle, you know, fifth of main down to 5D, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen right now if you're doing it. It's not going to happen in 20 years if you're doing it. It's not going to happen in a couple hundred months years if you're doing it. Because it's a f not the same vibrational frequency. If you think of, um, since we're talking about food, right? You know, you have your whole digestive system and there's different membranes that different size molecules can fit through. Well, the molecule that is camping, the molecule that it doesn't matter which camp you're in, is that is you know, being divisive and that is shooting and, you know, all those kinds of things is the wrong size molecule to go through uh, and pass through, tear down the barriers of the higher frequencies. So that if people gave more credence, more attention and intention and open heartedness to that, you know, what's interesting is that that will raise your vibration quicker and that will also do all sorts of alchemical changes within all of your bodies that will naturally um, shift what you feel nudged to eat. And without all of that other camping and all that other kind of stuff, you are, and without, you know, having to feel the need that you've got to hold a banner or call attention to or sell that, you know, you got to do this or I'm doing this and you're not doing that, whatever it is, right. That you're, that you're sailing along, you know, sometimes there's, you, the wave crashes over your head and sometimes, well, you're on the crest and, but you're sailing along and things are dramatically changing, dramatically changing in what you want to eat or how you walk in the world or how you open your heart or how you stop and look or how you notice and you go, well, I want to connect with the people who are growing my food, or local farmers market, or this and that, or you, you're just noticing, or, or as simple as being more mindful when you're eating, instead of, you know, sitting there in front of the TV or whatever, or rushing to do this or that, the other thing, that you sit down and you drink a glass of water, or drink a glass of orange juice, or a cup of coffee, whatever it is, and each sip is, a, is amusing. Each sip is a revelation of the flow of the liquid on your tongue and how it's going through. I mean, you can do a whole, talk about meditation, you could do a whole meditation as that one thing goes through. Now you've done a lot for changing and expanding your whole frequency. And you didn't have to camp, you know, all over the place. Or fight against someone telling you you have to give something up. I think as soon as a human predilection kind of wholesale is as soon as we say, well, I'm on a diet or I'm giving that up because it's, you know, all of a sudden, my God, you know, we can't, I never had this many cravings for, you know, whatever it is I'm trying to give up until I said I'm going to give it up. Well, now there is programming conditioning. That's that you know, that shielding coming in and triggering you because you're making some changes. So, so that's where I don't think when they started saying this, this is what they meant, but a difference between a life change and a diet or something, because it's a frequency thing and not a camping thing. So as I said at the beginning of this thing, I think it's a fascinating conversation because it's actually really not about the thing that people think the conversation is about at all. No, I agree. That's I, just I, a I, metaphor. Right? Yeah, no, I wholeheartedly agree in that um, it all feels like division, divisionary separation from, from jump and um, as each well, as I, um, 
figure out, uh, experiment with, and move towards my own sovereignty. And I think that's what everyone is, you know, the sovereignty is a big thing. And that's part of becoming the singularity that we are, realizing that I not only do I not need, but I don't want everybody to be the same. Mm-hmm. A, how freaking boring. And B, not at all the point of being here and having experiences. You know, I, 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 I laugh. For me, it feels very, very humorous that we're all one. And, and the whole point of coming here is having different experiences. And then we all run around trying to make everybody do the same thing. You know, it's like, I know the right way to do it and you got to follow me. What? That's not the whole point of this. Well, that's so, not an expanded frequency. That's not a higher vibrational frequency. And yet, even in the, even in all of us, myself included, at times, I, you know, it's not like I'm sitting here saying, "Oh, I don't do that anymore," because yes, I do. I have. I've caught myself. Um, we want everybody to do because this is the best way, and this is the only way, and you know, you got to do this. Well, ain't that kind of what we're all fighting against to begin with? We're all, you know, we're all slaves. So we want to get out of that. But now this one over here says we can't do that because that's wrong and you need to follow me. Wait a minute. That's what that guy over there said. So hold up. we got an issue here. Let's let's think about this a minute. Right. So, well, thank you both for, 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 for bravely discussing this topic with me because I know it's not an easy topic to talk about. It's been on my list for a while and, and I saw it, you know, in the last two weeks coming up quite a bit again. In the you different- know, and hey, try a higher consciousness expanding thing and talk to your body. And what will your body in this moment think is the most beneficial for the path that you uniquely are on right this moment? And if it says some broccoli, Cool. If it says, you know, a little bit of, I don't know, chicken or shrimp or something like that, cool. Because you're asking your body. You're not asking your brain. You're not thinking, 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 thinking. So that goes again into, uh, you know, that whole um, listening and honoring and discernment and connection. Because our bodies are this huge, amazing um, cohesive structure that's in coherence of a huge community. I don't know, was it 50 trillion cells or something? Yeah, something like that. And they've got it all going on. So it might behoove us to uncamp for a minute and <laughs> sit down by the campfire and listen to a yarn spun here or there and <laughs> See how it goes. Well, and <laughs> well, and I guess that's why I wanted to to call this honoring all paths because in in truth, for me, if if the whole idea is um, being accepting and um, and honoring each other, then that has to include how we go about all of this yeah. and, 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 and trying to say that, uh, like I said, uh, I, I used, I used to say this a lot in my life. It was my way or the highway. Well, we, there's an awful lot of that going on out there. And, and I think that that's not the way it is. That's not the way it's supposed to be. I, I, it took me a long time to figure that out. And we, and, and just the honoring of whatever one feels called for themselves, there, there's beauty in that. And there's nothing wrong with that. Doesn't make anyone wrong or bad because that's what they're choosing. It is right. just And that. it's not anyone else's um, job or um, 
uh, correct use of higher vibrational frequency to disabuse somebody of that, whatever that is. It could be that eating, you know, a half a cow is at that moment the, the most important thing and the most important road that they go down. Um, until you have such a wide aperture out there with source, full of source, wide aperture, you can't see all of the different paths of that. Or if, you know, or, or the same with a vegetable. It doesn't really, I'm just using those as examples. Um, because maybe, just run the cow from it, maybe the a cow took them to that place or maybe someone decides that they went to a farmer's market and they had never been into vegetables. They're into vegetables and this, that, that. so they're going down this different path and all these things that they met, or they made a snide comment about the vegetables because they were with some friend who, you know, eats rabbit food all the time and whatever, and they're a meat eater. And, you know, you guys got to be steak with a, maybe a, a smidge of potato and, you know, that kind of stuff. And all of a sudden, they struck up that conversation. But if the friend who took this other friend to the farmer's market would say, well, you know, you're this and that, the other thing, and there's this combative energy, they never would have been open to these different things. That's what I'm saying. So, it, so it's the whole totality of that frequency, the energy and the path that each one is choosing that opens up. And it's not, it's not our job to direct somebody else to do it you know i've had many people come and say well you gotta stop this person from saying that or you gotta do this i'm thinking no i'm really absolutely certain i don't gotta do any of that because i'm not supposed to it's not my job <laughs> and the path that they're going on might do i'm not saying that i agree or disagree with anybody per se i'm just saying that the path that they're going on is it going on and i can also have boundaries if it relates to myself personally or, you know, a portal or something that I have myself, I can have my boundaries and not allow certain energies in there. And that's my decision. But, but I can not allow, and again, here's the thing of, you know, not seeing, there can be some things that are, that's, that someone may look at as a negative that I allow because the expansiveness in that, the journey that I see the potential for, for um, that eliciting in other beings is tremendous. Is it the heart that a tomato or a, a cow, you know, if we're in the camping thing? Yeah, perhaps it could be, you know, the biggest tomato or the biggest cow. But nonetheless, right, it has incredible expansion in it. And if I was into the camping, I'd miss all that for myself, that knowing, that seeing, and I'd, and also being of service to provide the dance that that then gives to other beings. So I would have missed it. Others would not have had that opportunity in their own unique way to come to it. And I would not be doing what I'm being asked to do in being service to others. Among that is myself as other. But that's just the way I hold it. Well, like I said, I really appreciate the two of you having this conversation with me. And, you know, I'm, 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 I'm very grateful that, that you two were willing. So... Do either one of you have anything else you'd like to add to this conversation? <laughs> I know you said something because your lips moved, Lisa, but we didn't hear it. I said no. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> well, no, she said other good stuff too, but that's <laughs> Okay, well, we will have ways for you to get in touch with each one of us in the show more section of this video. And um, <clears throat> you're welcome to comment. However, <laughs> please note that all comments in regards to one camp or the other, just try to, <laughs> try 
I don't know. Wait, no I don't, camping? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I'm trying to say no camping. <laughs> no camping. Just feel into that for yourself is I guess what I'm saying. So until next time. Mm, that's why.